Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be dealing with an infinite expression. We have 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1 over dot 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 goes on forever and we're going to try to evaluate this expression or find the limit of this expression. So let's go ahead and start by setting the whole thing equal to x. If there is a finite value that this converges to, we call that x. So if in that case, we're going to have a piece that repeats itself. So the whole expression actually uh, that contains itself infinitely many times. And this is the same piece because if you look at it carefully, it starts with 1 plus 1 over something something. So it's going to be the same pattern. And this is also going to converge to x. Let's go ahead and write this down as an equation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and set up an equation. And then we're going to solve that equation. And we're going to find the solutions. And then we'll discuss... Uh, something about the solutions and then I'll do something else you'll see what it is I'm not going to tell you right now but something interesting and then at the end I'm going to show you a graph of two functions okay let's proceed this gives us 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over x equals x great let's go ahead and make a common denominator here this, that's going to become 1 plus 1 over x minus 1 over x equals x and then we're going to go ahead and flip x minus 1 over x so that's going to give us 1 plus x over x minus 1 equals x and now we're going to make a common denominator let's go ahead and multiply the 1 over 1 by x minus 1 over x minus 1 that gives us x minus 1 plus x over x minus 1 equals x great now here's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and add the numerators. x plus x is 2x, so that gives us 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 equals x. And then from here, we can go ahead and cross multiply. That gives us 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus x. If you put everything on the same side, that's going to give you a quadratic equation. Let's see what it looks like x squared minus x minus 2x, that's going to become minus 3x, and then minus 1 plus 1, it's going to become x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So that's going to be the quadratic equation I was talking about. I, I didn't say quadratic, I didn't want to give it away, but anyways, this quadratic equation has two solutions. Let's go ahead and find them by using the quadratic formula. Hopefully you already know the formula, we talked about it a few times recently. So the quadratic formula gives us x equals negative b, and I'm going to quickly uh, write down the formula here. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and our equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now in this case, a is equal to 1, so I don't need to worry about it. Negative b is the opposite of the coefficient of x, which is 3 in this case, plus I'm going to split it up into two solutions. Square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's called the discriminant and a very important number for um, the quadratic and as well as other polynomial equations anyways. b squared 9 minus 4. That is going to be square root of 5 and that divided by 2a or 2. And the other solution is just going to be the conjugate 3 minus root 5 over 2. Okay, great. Not so great because we got two solutions. But this expression, if it has a certain value, a finite value, then it needs to be a single value, a unique value. So we can't have two solutions. That's not okay. So how do we eliminate one of the solutions? Hocus pocus, abracadabra. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to do some math here. So first of all, I want you to observe a couple things. For example, what does this look like from a sequence um, standpoint? So if we write the terms one by one, for example, start off with 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1. Stop at the 1 plus 1 and let this be our first term. Let's call this a sub 1. Let's evaluate it. Easy. 1 minus half is 1 half. Reciprocal is 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Easy, right? How about a sub 2? Well, a sub 2 is just going to be the same thing. You just have to continue like one more iteration. 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1. It's kind of like a mouthful, right? Okay, so that is the expression that we're getting. And that's going to be a sub 2. But to evaluate a sub 2, we can actually take advantage of the fact that we know a sub 1. 
How? Because a sub 2 contains a sub 1, and that's actually going to be the same for all terms. They're going to, going to contain the previous terms, right? And this is a sub 1, as you can see here, right? Cool. So knowing that a sub 1 is equal to 3 is actually very helpful because you only have to deal with 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 third. 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. If you reciprocate it, that's 3 halves plus 1 gives you 5 halves. So a sub 1 is 3 and a sub 2 is 5 halves. So that kind of gives you an idea about what the terms are going to look like. If you want to do a sub 3, be my guest, but I'm not going to do it. Hopefully you get the idea. But you can definitely do it and you're going to get 2 point something. But what am I going to do with this? I can't just keep writing terms and assume that, hey, all the terms are greater than whatever. We're going to use proof by induction. First of all, I claim, I hereby claim, I claim that a sub n, the nth term, is greater than 2. By the way, what I mean by the nth term is, remember, we did one iteration, two iterations. If you do it n times, you're going to get a sub n, which is kind of like time consuming to write. Anyways, how do I prove this? Well, first of all, we're going to do the following. Check a sub 1. a sub 1 is 3, and that's greater than 2. Great, so our base case is established. And then we're going to assume, we're doing proof by induction, by the way, assume that a sub k is greater than 2 for some k greater than or equal to 1, some positive integer. And if we assume the following, then what is going to happen? Let's go ahead and take a look at a sub k plus 1. If we can make um, a sub k plus 1 greater than 2, if this implies that, then we're good. But a sub k plus 1 is, remember, we, when we were writing a sub 2, we actually write it this way. a sub 2 is 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over a sub 1. So this is actually going to help you to write a sub k plus 1 because it's going to look like the following. 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over a sub k. Easy, right? All you have to do is replace a sub 1 with a sub k and a, two, a sub 2 with a sub k plus 1. Anyways, too many subs. So now, if you make a common denominator just like before, you're going to get a sub k minus 1 over a sub k. Flip, and you're going to get a sub k plus 1 equals 1 plus a sub k over a sub k minus 1. And now I'm going to do the following. I'm going to write this as a sub k minus 1 plus 1 because I want to split up, split it up as much as possible. And this gives me another 1. So a sub k plus 1 can be written as 1 plus 1 plus 1 over a sub k minus 1. And finally, a sub k plus 1 becomes 2 plus 1 over a sub k minus 1. Great. So how is this useful? Well, remember, we assume that a sub k is greater than 2, and we already know a sub 1 is greater than 2. So now let's take a look. Since a sub k is greater than 2, this is going to be greater than 1, which means it's going to be positive. So this is going to be positive. 2 plus a positive number is always going to be greater than 2. And yay, we just made it work. So a sub k is greater than 2 implies a sub k plus 1 greater than 2, and we're done. So now let's take a look at the two solutions. 3 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 2. So we're going to reject that solution. And we're going to go with the other solution. Therefore, our expression converges to 3 plus root 5 over 2. So that's going to be the value we've been looking for. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and then we'll finish up. Okay, here's our graph of the expression. Remember, we set up an equation at the beginning, and y equals x, which is what we set it equal to, and you get two intersection points, which are the two roots, but we're going to go with the positive one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow for the end of the video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.